Hi, this is Sarah DeMeo with Acuity Solutions. Today's NX video tip is inspired by our customers, many of whom need to machine from an STL file from time to time. In this video, Andy covers two different topics, machining from a closed body STL file and creating a closed facet body from an irregular STL file. In the first tutorial, Andy will show you how to create the proper important geometry settings, define the workpiece, as well as region control techniques and checking for accuracy. Now, sometimes your STL file can be a little bit messy with holes or extraneous polygons. In the second tutorial, Andy shows you how to apply the different editing options available to you and how to extrude a facet body from the sheet body for machining. Thanks for watching. In this video, we'll explore machining using NXCAM and facet bodies or files that come from STL geometry. I've already got some uh, setup work done in this NXCAM file. What I need to do now is import the STL file. That's where we'll begin. Make sure you change your settings to look for an NX facet body. Match the units up and it's already finding my forging5.stl file. This is a well-behaved file, so I know that it's a closed body and the file is fairly smooth. You only see a few areas here with black edges indicating that there's a tangency issue. The rest of it's coming out just fine. So I'm ready to begin machining. <coughs> when I define my workpiece, I've got to do things just a little bit differently. Here under specify part, I must change from solid body to facet body. Now I'll go into specify blank and I've got bounding block chosen so it's created a blank for me. <clears throat> when you machine facet bodies you've got to think about things a little differently. There are no individual surfaces that you can select so if I grab just a straight three-axis machining algorithm and point it at this body, it's going to try and machine anything it can reach with the tool. So I've got to be careful about techniques I use to constrain the tool motion to particular areas of the body. The cavity mill should work pretty successfully though. It's found the part and the blank. Let's just generate and look at our result. <clears throat> Next, I'll go to the Verify, and we'll create a 3D IPW and suppress the animation. We'll just look at the end result of the cavity mill operation. Okay. That's pretty much what we would expect. We're ready to continue to the next operation. As I mentioned, if we just fire this off without any kind of constraining geometry, it's going to try and machine the whole part. So specify trim boundaries is one technique that would help. Also, boundary machining works well with faceted bodies. For our demonstration today, though, I'm in the contour area operation type and I'll demonstrate the use of cut regions. So let's delete the regions that are there and recreate them real quick. I'm going to create regions for steep and non-steep using the 45 degree break as the boundary between the two region types. <clears throat> In a minute here, it will display those regions on the screen. And you can see they're not as clean as you would expect from native CAD geometry, but they are going to work for our purposes here today. If we look in the list of regions, you'll see that uh, it's found one very extensive steep region and then a number of smaller shallow regions to machine. Let's click OK. I've already set up my 
parameters here. I want uh, the steep regions to be machined every 20 thousandths, and I'm using 5% step over on the shallow regions. Now I have a, a 3 8 ball already selected. Let's generate. This operation then will look at all regions, the steep and non-steep, and apply the correct logic to each region. So here comes the steep region. So that's a constant Z-level machining. And now you see the non-steep regions. We'll just zoom in and look at the interface between the two. And you do see some of the artifacts from the odd region boundaries, but uh, at the same time, this is a fairly well-behaved STL file, and this should result in a successful machining operation. Now, what if your uh, STL file is not well-behaved? If you have regions that are not smooth, or you've got holes in your STL file, we'll look at that next. Before we leave this portion of the demo, though, let's go to Verify. And I'll just, uh, again, suppress animation and head right to the end. We'll turn on show thickness by color and look at the results of our operation. OK. I'll hit the show thickness by color button so we'll get a better representation of the remaining material on our part. And here we have a graphical display of remaining material. I'll just select a couple of points here. And we're less than a thousandths from finish here. That's right on. In the next section, then, we'll go through some editing tools for STL files. This STL file came from a much coarser scan, and it has some problems that need to be solved. Sometimes the scanning process will result in outliers which are then processed as additional facets, like you see here kind of floating in space above our part. Because those show up as members of this single facet body, we're going to need to get rid of those before this is going to be valid for machining. Let's look for where our editing commands are for facet bodies. Here I'll choose the menu command, edit, and I'm sorry this is going off the bottom of the screen here, but it's facet body, and then we're using the snip command. And the command we want here, or the option, is snip region. So first it prompts me to select the facet body, and now I'm going to draw a boundary where I'm going to snip. I can use a combination of both clicking and dragging, or creating linear boundary moves just by clicking on various points. Here I'll click OK, and you don't really see anything immediately different. However, when I move over the snipped region, you see it's now its own facet body, and I can just hit the delete key to remove it. If this is going to be valid for machining, it will have to be a closed facet body. And this one is not right now. There's another command that will help us. And once again, this is going to go off the bottom of the screen. But it's edit facet body fill hole. As I select the facet body, you see the holes highlight here. I'm not going to do the ends yet, but I do want to find these holes that are here in the middle. And as soon as I select those boundaries, uh, you see it attempting to fill the holes. There's another one there. And I think that's probably the last one that's in the middle of the part. So let's click OK. And it fills those in for us. Now we want to look at smoothing. This is a rough scan. And before we machine this, we're, we're going to want to smooth this out. So I'm back to the same area again under Edit. This time I'm choosing Facet Body and Smooth. 
the smooth command is very powerful, but you do have to be careful with it because uh, beyond smoothing, you can actually start to lose detail in your part. And in fact, that's why I chose not to cap the ends initially because I want to smooth first and then create that final capping operation. So I'll turn my smoothing factor up a little bit. Let's hit show preview. And that gives us a, a, a really nice result there without losing the, uh, the features of the part. It's, this isn't really uh, the decision-making process that can come from training. You just need to practice with the settings on these two slider bars to, and then use preview to determine if you're getting the result you're after. Let's click OK. And that's now made permanent in our file. We'll go back again to the edit command. Or, I'm sorry, the edit tab, facet body, and I'm at fill hole one more time. And I'll select the two areas I want to fill. Um, it's on tangent based right now. I could also choose linear, but this is a result that will work for me and give me a facet body that I can now bring into NXCAM and use for machining. Let's explore these facet editing options in more detail. Due to scanning problems, this part has a large hole here on this edge. Let's fill that first. I'll keep the tangent base smoothness on. It does a nice job of filling that in. I'll select this hole at the same time. I also have some problems resulting from drilled holes that were on the edges. I want to go straight across these holes, but in some cases there's no facets there to do that. So I'll need to fill those. This one presents a different kind of problem though because there's no hole to fill. It goes completely to the outside edge. Here I'll change my option to bridge gap. So here's my first edge. And then for the second edge, you don't have to pick them with the one-to-one -one correspondence. It'll usually figure things out. So I can apply, and now I can switch back to fill hole. There's a, another option here called fill island that I don't have a good example for, but it's kind of similar to bridge gap in that you identify the hole you identify the boundary around the island and it bridges out to it. What about situations uh, like here where I had a hole but the scan resulted in some incorrect data? What I'll do is snip this out first and then I'll fill it. So I'll use the snip region command. And this would, might be a good possibility for the fill island, except I know that these facets are bad. So I'll delete this region. And we'll go back to fill hole again. First we need to bridge. And now do fill hole. So that's a very quick way of removing those bad facets and replacing them. The smoothing algorithm can also be used to deal with the problems we saw earlier. I'll just choose one other option that's available there. So I'm going back to Edit, Facet Body, smooth and the option I want to use is the ability to draw a boundary here. I'll hit the middle mouse button and it shows me the points over which the smoothing is going to take place. 
I'll hit show preview and again that's another technique for removing those bad facets. At this point I might want to do an overall smooth So without uh, changing any of the options, the default gives us a fairly smooth body without losing the, the detail in these uh, sharper edges. So let's hit OK. And we'd like to machine this surface now. However, while you can machine sheet bodies in NXCAM, you cannot machine a faceted sheet body. We've got to turn this into a faceted body, not a sheet, before we can continue. I'll uh, just type facet in up here and search for another command that's going to help us with this. It's called extrude facet body and you can see here on the screen where that's found. It prompts us then to select the sheet and now it wants a distance and a vector. I'll just reverse that vector that's going up. We'll use a one inch distance, click apply. And it does a, a really nice job of creating a plane one inch below and then extruding everything down, giving us faceted edges. So this body's now ready to go to NXCAM for machining.